When talking about tank myths, engines aren't usually the first thing to come to mind, but you would be surprised at how many myths center around tank engines. I guess it shouldn't really be that much of a shock. After all, engines are essentially the heart of a tank. If your vehicle doesn't have a good engine, it's not going to accomplish much at all. People can get surprisingly defensive about what type of engine or fuel they think is best. Engines can also be complex affairs sometimes, so that leads to more misunderstandings about them. Today, we're going to try to sort some of those myths out. But before we get into it, I want to talk about my sponsor. I'm partnered with Apex Gaming. They make pre-built PCs. If you're looking to upgrade, you should check them out. Link is in the description and comments. You can use my username as a discount code on checkout. Now back to the video. As I just mentioned, people can sometimes be really defensive about what engine type they think is best. Because of this more than anything, it seems like diesel myths are more prevalent. It's often said that diesel engines are better because they're much safer. Diesel fuel is supposedly much more difficult to ignite, so that means tanks with diesel engines are more survivable. It's often said that you can dip a match in a barrel of diesel and it still won't light up. This idea isn't necessarily wrong, but I feel like it's both an exaggeration and generalization. Compared to, say, a gasoline engine, yes, diesel engines pose less of a fire risk. But that doesn't mean that fires aren't likely to happen, especially when the vehicle's in combat. It should go without saying, but throwing a match into an open barrel of diesel doesn't translate to a diesel fuel tank being struck by an anti-tank round. In fact, there are plenty of diesel engine tanks that had issues with fires. The side fuel tanks on T-34s were apparently notorious for lighting up when struck, which due to their placement, was very unfortunate for the crew. In terms of survivability, fuel tanks should be separated from the crew by armored bulkheads anyway, so the choice of fuel shouldn't matter all too much. Oh, and something interesting I found when researching this. When diesel burns in, say, a car accident, it does release less heat, but it also burns for much longer. This could have an impact on vehicle recovery. Anyway, back to the point. Diesel certainly was a bit safer back when gasoline engines were still in use, but in modern times it doesn't matter much. You would think that since it uses a gas turbine engine, the M1 Abrams would use more volatile fuel, but JP-8, the universal fuel for the US Army, is basically just as safe as diesel. There's another slightly related myth from World War II. It's not really common nowadays, but I do remember hearing it a few times growing up. The myth goes that German tanks were safer to be in, as they had diesel engines, and therefore caught fire less especially when compared to the M4 Sherman, which apparently caught fire all the time since it used gasoline. This is wrong in a lot of ways. In World War II, German tanks did not use diesel engines. I think there were a few test beds here and there, but pretty much their entire tank force used gasoline engines. There were only two armies that really bought into diesel, those being Japan and Russia. Allied nations had the occasional offshoot like the diesel M4A2, but most nations used gasoline engines. German tanks also had very similar burn rates to Allied tanks, around 60% or more. And as I briefly covered in the M4 video, its initially high burn rates weren't caused by fuel fires, but ammunition fires. Now let's move on to a myth about the M1 Abrams, specifically Australian M1s. I'm honestly not sure how prevalent this myth is, but I've definitely seen it pop up in the comments from time to time. Some people believe that when Australia procured their M1s, they had the turbine engines replaced with diesels. This one is pretty easy to debunk. Just watch some of their M1s on parade. Yup, they still have that characteristic turbine sound. Sources make no mention of the engine being swapped. And as far as I know, such a thing was never even discussed, at least not publicly. Now there were other similar programs. When Kuwait was looking to acquire M1s, there were talks about replacing the AGT with the diesel MTU-883. Kuwait expressed interest in this pitch, but after some evaluation, it was deemed infeasible. If you wanted to replace the AGT, that would require changing a lot of systems, including the fuel, cooling, exhaust, NBC, and electrical systems. Development would have cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and added six years to the schedule. In the end, Kuwait received regular M1s. The new M1A2K, designed specifically for Kuwait, retains the turbine as well. And finally, it's often said that turbines are very complex, making them more difficult to repair. Turbines are actually pretty simple, and that's one reason they're used on the M1. Anyway, that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.